Yes, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Stephen Alson, live news, bit of reaction, bit of talk. Get your questions in. Let's start chatting all sorts of macro. So, what happened last night? Basically, the journalists didn't have a pot of glue what was going on. Um, I'm going to summarise how uh, football media managed last night's deadline. Manchester United have had bids from these guys, these guys, and these guys, and they all got submitted by the 9 o'clock bid. Apart from the ones who didn't and asked for an extension. So whether United are being bought or not being sold, um, you heard it here first, maybe. Absolute shit show. And Sky Cover, especially, made a complete twat of himself um, by tweeting the following. Sheikh Jashin from Qatar has made new improved world record bid for Manchester United debt-free. He believes it's the best bid for the club, the fans and the community. Bid went in before 9pm deadline. Now, there's no wishy-washy wording in there. There's no, I'm led to believe it was bosh, bosh, bosh. Basically like he'd been given a press release almost. And then he was on telly an hour later telling everyone how... Uh, neither Sheikh Jassim or Sir Jim Radcliffe have submitted bids for Manchester United before the 9pm deadline. Right then. Um, what does that mean? So, actual reputable journalists um, have come out and said um, that there's up to eight people involved in the bidding. The bid process seems to be absolute chaos. We've had the very, very public bids. That's Qatar and Sir Jim Radcliffe's Ineos. Um, they've asked for more time to submit the bid than the 9pm uh, last night. That was the second bid deadline. Um, there's a lot of people going, does that mean that the Glazers aren't going to sell? I, I think they are. I think all of the talk, well, well, we'll just keep it then. It's just pure negotiation tactics. You don't want to ever walk into somewhere and go, I'll pay whatever you want. I really, really want the club no matter what. And you don't want to be someone selling something saying, I'm so desperate to sell, I'll take whatever I can get. You have to go in and go, listen, we're open. If someone makes us a nice offer, maybe we'll think about it. You never want to go in and be like, listen, just cash out the chips and let's run away. So the BBC report was that Ineos owner Jim Radcliffe and Qatar banker Sheikh Jassim are set to submit new bids to buy United after the deadline was extended at their request and missed confusion on Wednesday night. BBC Sport has, told, has been told several other proposed investors did make their submissions by that time. So while all of us are focusing on uh, Sheikh Jassim or, or Jim Radcliffe because those are the ones that are going very public, we always said there will be... I mean, Chelsea has 30 plus... United to have around about eight, probably because of the money involved. Makes a little bit more sense. We're, we're going to cost a lot more than Chelsea did. Billions more than Chelsea did. So that obviously shrinks the potential market for that. There was always going to be some people who said nothing and just boshed it in. Um, BBC Sport also said that they've learned that United officials met eight different potential investors over a 10-day period uh, at high-level meetings recently. So it was only the fact that we saw... Uh, the Qatari contingent and Sir Jim Radcliffe getting photographed at Old Trafford. There would have been people in and out of there and Carrington all week last week, but because we don't know who they are, they were never picked up by the paparazzi. So this asks the questions, who's the other six? And actually, before we get on to the other six, did you see what happened with Ineos yesterday? There's an, a massive explosion in, I think it was in Texas. Uh, is the timing of that coincidental? Was it a false flag? Was it an insurance job? Probably not. Probably just really poor sort of um, management. But it is what it is. Interesting. And I think that a company that size is probably self-insured as well. So I don't know what the insurance uh, would be. But if it's cost somewhere in the region of a billion, that might affect the plans. I don't know if it'll accelerate or decelerate them, but I think it could affect them. I have no idea on the intricacies of how that's going to work, mind. So, the other six, who could they be? So, we already kind of know that Elliot Investment Management are one of them. Now, that is an American company that's offering funding to potential bidders and potentially even to the Glazers themselves. So, we think that's another company that's in the mix. Because it's not just full takeover that's on the cards, there is also the, the full range of buffet is available in terms of sticking a little bit of cash in to help the Glazers. I think that's on the table just so they can say that they're exploring everything and also raise the price. Because if you're like full sale or nothing, leaves you in a bit of a sticky situation. If you're like, listen, we're open to all the, the sort of possibilities, including just investment and carrying on owning them like we have done for the last 18 years, I think it gives you a little bit more of a leeway. I reckon it's probably someone in Saudi Arabia, if not 
you know, something official from Saudi Arabia is probably in the mix. Um, looking at doing similar to what Qatar have done and whether that is to fund a private individual or encourage a private individual um, to come and get in the mix. Um, so there's no conflict with Newcastle, the way we've got going on with PSG uh, and Sheikh Jassim and that, whether we believe it or not, or whether it's a big fat wink, I still think that's a potential for someone that could be in the mix. Amazon has long been rumoured, and I don't know if there's any basis in that whatsoever, or if it's just something that I've gone, they've got loads of cash. And actually, like Jeff Bezos' ex-wife has got loads of cash. It literally could be her. Um, but yeah, everyone's just gone, Jeff Bezos got absolutely tons of cash. It makes sense. But why does it make sense? Well, if you're paying attention, Amazon are getting into Premier League a lot more. Amazon do uh, create their own original content on Prime Video where you're seeing quite a lot of admittedly very good documentaries. We obviously saw the All or Nothing with, with Tottenham, with City, with Arsenal. Uh, they've done ones with Juventus. They've got a, a ton of documentaries, including Sir Alex Ferguson's on there. So having a club that they own, as well as being a content delivery vehicle, really expands them into a whole different market. So Amazon's not as crazy uh, as you pre uh, presume it could be, but there is there a conflict of interest? This is where the whole B Sky B takeover in 1998 fell down because they thought it was a conflict of interest with Sky having the monopoly on uh, the TV rights with United. But at the time, it was only Sky that had TV rights. Now there's multiple pe different people involved. I don't know if it's as much of a conflict of interest. Dubai could be another one. They were spoken about uh, a lot at the start and they seem to be genuine interest, but that has absolutely cooled over recent weeks and I haven't heard anything in terms of Dubai in recent times. Apple, again, have they ever made any sort of noises about doing this or is it all just people projecting that that would make sense and much the same sort of way as Amazon is a content delivery vehicle or at least moving more and more towards that. So is Apple. And I remember seeing a good 10 years ago, and I thought it was a great idea at the time, actually, was Apple was looking at you being able to buy single Premier League matches um, in the App Store and be able to watch them. Um, and I think that would be a brilliant thing to do. Rather than committing to you know, watching all of these matches and it costing hundreds of pounds a month, if you just wanted to pick and choose the matches that you want and have them you know, $3.99, $4.99 a game or something like that, I think that a lot of people would be open to doing that, especially with all the options that you've got for streaming stuff nowadays. Elon Musk. Uh, I mean, I mean, he, he ended up stumping up 44 billion for Twitter, and it was on Twitter where he joked about buying Manchester United. Um, probably wouldn't be a good time for him to be seen throwing all that sort of money around. And I don't know if I want an owner that outspoken um, on social media. It'd be carnage, wouldn't it? Absolute carnage. Um, is there a, a private American consortium um, getting the funds together on the quiet, similar to what happened with Chelsea? We know that there's a constant um, desire from American businessmen to get involved in the Premier League. And I find... I find the business model of the NFL very interesting. So owners that have had NFL clubs... NFL clubs are worth vast amounts of money and probably massively inflated because of the limited scope of the NFL versus, you know, football. But one of the things that NFL owners, I think, get, and I don't know how many people in the UK and rest of the world un understand this about the NFL, is that there is a, a shared profit thing that happens. So if Manchester United signed if it was working under the same principles as the NFL, if Manchester United signed a world record deal for naming our stadium, the profits of that get shared amongst all the rest of the teams in the division. If we don't make that, all the rest of the other teams in the division lose money because we're not doing that. Um, also, there's no requirement for the clubs themselves to, to fund their own facilities. That's always done by the metropolitan area that they play in. Uh, to the tune of billions, which is madness to me. And I would love that if that was the case around here. Like, Trafford Council, get your hands in your pocket and build us a new ground. Like, there's no requirements on the clubs to do that. You can't get relegated, so you know you're, you're in it for the long haul, and that's why NFL teams make, one of the reasons, they make so much cash. They're commercialised in ways that Premier League clubs can't even think about. Uh, they have the whole state, generally, to be able to draw from in terms of their... 
um, capture audience. Whereas football is so much more fractured, and even though the global appeal might be bigger domestically and locally, uh, there's far too many clubs in England for you to have the same sort of focus that a single, you know, American football NFL team would have in a single state. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons why there is always so much interest from American businessmen wanting to get into the Premier League because they must see the numbers it does uh, internationally which absolutely dwarfs. I mean, even the Super Bowl is dwarfed by like the Manchester Derby. So when you see all of that going on, you must think, Jesus, this must make so much money. I mean, even the wages in, in the NFL are obscene uh, and in, in many cases completely dwarf what happens in terms of uh, Premier League. But it's just running such a different system. And obviously the draft system means that you're not constantly shelling out on transfer fees in the same sort of way. It's just something that couldn't happen and, and shouldn't happen necessarily um, with European football. Um, then you've got the potential Class of 92 fronted bid, um, which, you know, is that the dream option? I, I personally always thought, and I'm changing my sort of mind on that now because I, I actually genuinely think... I think Gary Neville, etc., are pushing for Salford to be a Premier League football team. Um, genuinely th believe that. I, I actually thought when they first took this over, they was maybe going to get them to the conference, maybe League Two, and then try to buy United, but learn how to run a club this way and then move it into United. I now no longer think that. I actually think that they're they're trying to get them into the Premier League to just get onto that TV money uh, and then do whatever with them. Um, I don't know if Salford would ever win the Premier League. I don't think that's realistic in all honesty, but I mean, as for them getting to the Premier League, I think they've got such a small fan base that it doesn't really make too much sense. But Bournemouth have changed my mind on that because Bournemouth is such a small club in, in the grand scheme of things that I actually think there's enough people in the metropolitan area of Greater Manchester to be able to go and watch football if they keep the if they keep their prices nice and low, I think they will attract people. Um, so I think that's an interesting project. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, you know, is there another possibility with a player getting involved with any of these consortiums? You know, there, there's a ton of wealthy individuals in the Far East, uh, in the Middle East, you know, or, or anywhere really. There could be other British businessmen that are looking at this. There could be an entire consortium being looked at this. We don't know. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the two very, very public bids are not the successful bids and it's someone that we as yet haven't heard of, well, that person's going to have to start doing a lot of PR in the very near future because um, I think that there'll be negative PR done by both Todd Booley, that's the Todd Booley, uh, Jim Radcliffe and uh, and the Qataris if they lose out to this person. So I, I think that you need to sort of set your stall out. Both of them two have come out so far and said, we are fans of the club which I think is the first thing that anyone needs to do, whether it's true or not. I think you've got to come out and state that. Um, but it's going to be an interesting one to see. Uh, there was someone who did say at some point that the money was pledged and they were drawing up the offer documents. I guess that, much like the lawsuit that they threatened, has been lost in the post because that didn't arrive either. So who knows who that could be? Who knows where that could be? Could be a load of old rhubarb, couldn't it? Um... Mr. Wilson says, if that was the case for the Greater Manchester teams, wouldn't that be the case for the likes of Wigan who get 10k most of the time? Wigan didn't just have 10k in the Prem, though, did they? When Wigan was a Premier League team. I'm going to have a look at this. But also, I'm not saying Salford are going to get anywhere in the region of like 30, 40,000 uh, watching them. Um, so Wigan had up to 20,000 watching them when they were in the Premier League. Um, and they're averaging, you know, 11. 10,000 now. What's Bournemouth's average attendance? Uh, Bournemouth's average attendance is 10,000. If Salford can get 10,000, then they can clearly sustain in the same way Bournemouth do. It's obviously more beneficial if you had 50, 60, 70,000, but they're not going to get 50, 60, 70,000. Uh, M says these American firms looking for loan investments may only be a vehicle for a state like Saudi, meaning Saudis keep their hands clean. Could be. Um, Robert Blake says, please stop this uninformed nonsense. We're speculating. We're having a discussion. At no point did it say, here is 
the facts on every single thing about every single person. We don't know who they are. They've not chosen to go public with who they are. So it's called speculating. Fuck me. No one made you click, did they? Um, Ed says, I think they lost my bid in the post. Um, if so, annoyed. Does magic beans cost a fortune? Um, yeah, myself, Kerry Katona and Mr. Bean also had a bid. We uh, we decided to withdraw it at the last minute, unfortunately. We couldn't decide on what we were going to call the new stadium. Um, JSM Radio says, needs to seriously understand what regime uh, we was just under and act like a true owner. Yes. Kingpin says, nobody knows what's going on until it's announced. Sky are embarrassing themselves, contradicting. That was hilarious, that on Sky last night. Um, hilarious. Um, yeah, do us a favour. Like the video if you think the Glazers will sell after this and downvote it if you think that they won't, if you think that they're going to stick around after this. Uh, A8 says, Simon Jordan is one of the secret bidders. Um, I saw... Um, I saw Eddie Earn going after him the other day. I thought that was fun. <laughs> Alan says, David Beckham opens a talk about the Manchester United sale for Financial Times. Uh, David Beckham's only going to... David Beckham never says anything concrete. He's only going to say positive things all the time. So that completely fits him with his wheelhouse. Um... Prabhav says, Salford versus Wrexham, who's getting to the Premier League first? Hmm. That could go either way, I think. Obviously, Salford have got a slight advantage on them at the moment, but um, I don't think they're getting promoted this year. In fact, where are they this year? They've, haven't they just recently got rid of the manager? So, Salford won't be going up this year. I mean, they could, well, they both will be in the stadium next year. Oh, they're seventh, so you know, they could actually get into the playoffs. Stockport flying. Imagine Stockport and Salford both end up in the Premier League. Stockport are doing sensationally well. Um, Gary says if the Qataris wanted the club, they would have bought it by now. Huh? How? <laughs> There's a bidding process. Uh, Bob says, Steve, I'm hoping Steve Ballmer is a mystery bidder worth about $118 billion and voted the NBA's best owner. Wowzers. Um, A8 says class of 92 don't have billions no they don't but I, I'm pretty sure most billionaires would just stack up the cash if David Beckham was like can I be the front of your bid please uh, M says Steer, I don't know if you know about how the Glazers paid for the Tampa Buck Stadium essentially they got their city council to make a new tax to pay for it ask me if I'm surprised um, David says Hit the likes to support Steve's channel. Yeah, I agree with that. Do that. Um, Qatar will win the bid, but then you can envisage people trying to block the move from various avenues. There's no way they can do that after they've allowed the Saudi Arabian bid to go through. But that's not to say that I don't think people won't try because I, I think they probably will try. Abinav says, I wouldn't mind owners having uh, to invest a fixed amount in the city they bought the football club in and part of it invested in the city for back in facilities. A million percent this, right? So... Um, Class of 92 lads and Jordi Cruyff just opened up a, I think it's called a Cruyff Circle, maybe, is it? Something like that. Basically, it's a, a, a 3G pitch in the middle of, I think they've done it in the middle of Salford, a little Hulton if you want to get technical. Um, why are not Premier League teams doing this? Manchester, for a football mad city, is, is an absolute desperational lack of facilities. Um, the likes of Huff End needs millions spending on it. You know, all of those things should be 3G. You don't really need to be having grass pitches for amateur level football. Yes, they're a nicety, but they can be used once or twice uh, a week, and, and in some cases, twice a month. That's not a good use of that space. If you had um, suitable 3 and 4G pitches all over the city, I know there was a massive stink about Gary Neville trying to transform Turn Moss, but Turn Moss, Huff End, these sorts of places, if you just did half grass, half 3G, these things would be used so much more by the community. And they would allow so much more football to go on in the community. There is a desperate lack of facilities within Manchester. And that is a massive, massive, massive issue. And the the fact that you've got two of the biggest Premier League teams in the country in this area. And as far as I know, they've done zero for the community in terms of providing facilities. Not asking them to be managed. Just build them and leave them. They'll be fine. You know, there's not enough of that, uh, in my opinion. And... 
anyone should that's looking to do anything in this city should be doing that. Shoot William says breaking glazers and the next episode of Dragons Den will get laughed out of Dragon by the Dragons. Tino says Morning Steve, can I see a scenario where a Qatari bid bins, uh, wins but Sir Jim pays for a new stadium revamp having the naming rights with Ineos? That's interesting. Um, yeah, I could see that. Uh, Bernardino says 90% of USA stadiums are paid for by residents and not owners. Owners pay about 15% mental. Even that mental um yasin says i don't know if you answered this already but who would i want the mystery bidders to be an absolute mega billionaire that's been a lifelong fan don't give a shit about his nationality just as long as he's been a, a lifelong fan who has got a desire to give the club back to the fans and create a fan owned club that would be my ideal. Does that exist? No. It doesn't. Lambert says, you football on a school level needs severe investment to put us near the rest in Europe. A thousand percent. So uh, I'm looking at completing my UEFA uh, A license uh, and I wasn't looking at doing my pro license because of the criteria. Basically, it needs to have been five years playing professional football or um, in some sort of a a full-time professional job in a professional team, which I'm never going to get. Um, but there's there's ways of doing it through other FAs. Now, the English FA is probably one of the richest, if not the richest FA in the whole of world football. Yet they put on an absolute embarrassingly few amount of UA for B, A and Pro courses. Um, and when they they come up, they are snapped up instantly. And it's probably a bit of an old boys network in terms of making sure people get on the courses who need to get on the courses. The coaches that we've had at Paddock have had to go to the Welsh FA, to the Scottish FA, and to the Irish FA to get on their UEFA B and A courses because there's such a lack of being able to do the courses locally. Um, and as I was looking into this the other day, I saw that the likes of Hungary, um, Czech Republic, Tiny little nations uh, on the footballing scale. Spain embarrasses us. Germany embarrasses us. Italy embarrasses us in terms of... They're, they're talking three, four, five, six times the number of qualified coaches at that sort of level than we have. And call ourselves a football nation. It's embarrassing to not have the same number of qualified coaches. And it's not a through a lack of desire. Every single coach I know would love to get to his UEFA B, UEFA A level. But the, the absolute lack of of opportunities oh the course is three grand right so it's not a cheap course if you want to get onto your program course that's 10 grand I think the a is four grand you want to do all of those things for the most part you're going to be at a club doing it on a voluntary basis right so you've got to factor that in so that's time away from that you could be earning to be able to pay for those sorts of courses if you get in with a good club and you commit to doing x number of years a good club will pay for those courses that's something straight for paddock want to be doing um, but again, that's a difficult thing to get you loaded onto those courses in the first place. But the, the lack of investment in facilities and the lack of investment into coach education, you fix those two things and you fix football in this country. Um, and I would allow local grassroots teams to run local grassroots schools competitions because they would do it better, in my opinion. Sam says Paul Mitchell has just left Monaco. It's my understanding that he's not coming to United. Uh, Haley says, try living in Cornwall. Pitches are poor. I, I've i been to Cornwall a fair bit. Um, I, from what I can see, it's mostly, um, it's mostly grass pitches that you've got in Cornwall. But there does seem like there's a lot of land to put pitches. Uh, Joel says, that's why everyone goes to the Scottish and Welsh FA. Yeah, I'm doing it myself. I'm redoing my courses to go and do it through the Welsh FA. I'm literally on my level one again now with the Welsh FA so I can get in there and get all the way up there on mine because I can just pop, pop from one to the other. Um, JSM. This explains the lack of black people in the UK football then. What does that mean? In terms of participation or in terms of coaching and stuff? Potentially. Kieran says, seems to be a few league on managers without their pro licence. The pro license is well hard to get on. So obviously we all know um, about Will Still's very famous um, issues in terms of the getting on and having his pro license. Um, 
it's extremely difficult to get on. He could have technically been on one because he's been working as an assistant at professional club for, for years now. So he would have um, all of the requirements that you need to get on it. But it's not a uh, it's not an educational... Like, if you want to do a master's degree, if you've got a bachelor's degree, you, you know, and you pass an interview, you're, you're going to get on that course. It's not the case with a pro license. Like, you have to be have you have to have a job that requires that, have experience in that, and then you can get on a course if there's a course. But there's people going. Um, so there's a guy I'm chatting to at the moment that was trying to get me out to go and do my course in Germany, do it on an intense course. Then you've got to do flights, accommodation, and all the rest of that sort of stuff in another country to take it on in there. It's an absolute piss take. Uh, ben Foster has just joined Wrexham. Interesting. Uh, ben says, at the prices needed to buy us, anyone with a gumption and funds will have a shaky skeleton in their closet somewhere. Deciding who is the most ethical is futile, probably. Uh, Sidon says, morning, Stephen, and chat. Good morning. Uh, Darren says, whilst being owned by a mega-sized business brings its own problems, e.g. stability of their business over time and ethical practices. Yes. Uh, I mean, even Apple. Well, there's issues with Apple about you know the factories in China where their phones are manufactured. There's there's issues with you know how all cobalt is mined would absolutely blow your brains if you go and have a look at it. Um, Ty says there are are there blocks in place to stop losing mystery bidders um, who had access to our data room potentially making investments in one of our rivals. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think there's an NDA where you can't disclose um, the information that you've seen here. Um, infinite probability says there are levels to mor morality, though, of course. Gav or GV says, probably mentioned already, but did I see Evan Ferguson scored his first international goal last night? Uh, I did. Congratulations to him. Um, Connor says, oh, what if Michael Knighton is one of the mystery bidders after all? Yeah, and, and and what if me, Mr. Bean, and Kerry Katona bid? Um, JSM says, I find it mad that you got to go through the Welsh FA and got to start from stage one again. Yeah, but it's it's so much quicker that I'm not asked. I'd rather just do it. Um, yeah, it's a piss take. Uh, Liam says, to have the football museum in Manchester and not giving a great football community getting the city com uh, committing for the next generation is poor. Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. And I think Manchester FA are doing their best thing. Um with it neil says i thought the pro license was invite only as well I, you have to you have to pass an interview and you have to like write a letter about it in fact while we're on let's pull up the so the english fa pro license i'll read out the requirements for it um so not only is it nine thousand eight hundred and ninety pounds <laughs> and it's 18 month long course prerequisites the course has been specifically designed for anyone aspiring to work at the very top level of the game in leadership and management positions within the premier league football league women's super league and the international game any coach looking to start this course must meet the following criteria graduate of uefa a license with priority given to applicants holding the english fa award so if you can get on the english fa a license which is ninja then you've ticked box number one to get in on the pro license this is the bit where you're going to fall down. Number two, experience in a full-time position in the professional game in one of the following roles. Coach, assistant manager, manager, head of coaching, academy manager, head of recruitment, technical director, or a player, minimum five years playing experience. Okay, <laughs> right? Let's say I've got a desire um, to, to reach the pro license. How am I doing that? A full-time position in the professional game. So, you know, it's academy coach isn't one of those, which is an entry that a lot of um, junior coaches manage to get. Coach is essentially first-team coach. So, whenever a new manager comes in, he brings his own staff. So, you ain't getting that, right? One of my friends is head of sports science uh, at a Premier League team. He doesn't qualify for this. Um, coach, assistant manager, manager, right? Ain't getting any of them free jobs in the professional game. Head of coaching, ditto. How are you going to get the head of coaching without a pro license? How can you be the head coach in there with only a UA for a mental academy manager? No, it's academy coach isn't there, but they'll allow academy managers. How are you getting to be the academy manager of a professional team without having the pro license? You're not. Head of recruitment, technical director, or a player. And then it also says, advanced youth award is desirable. Please note, meeting the above criteria may not guarantee a place on the course. 
Uh, and I think it does it mention. Um, it says, what if I've met most, but not all of the criteria? Can I still apply? No. We receive a high level of interest on these courses every season. So only those who meet all of the prerequisites will be considered for a place on the course. So no, close shop, sling it. Junior says, University of South Wales do an amazing degree, which gives you the FAC license in UEFA-B while coaching out in America as well. That's pretty awesome. That's a good way to get on it. Good morning from Minnesota. Good morning. Um, <laughs> I'm not reading that name out, but it's something to do with Margaret Thatcher. Um, I'd love to get into coaching badges. I'm in Swansea, so lucky that I don't have to travel far with the Welsh FA, but the money it would take is ridiculous and off-putting. You might be able to find a grassroots club. That's generally the, the trade-off with grassroots club. Most coaching is voluntary, uh, and if it's voluntary, ten, they'll tend to be able to support you with your courses and pay for your courses. Um... The Mert says, I don't get the coaching license requirement myself and I coach a team myself. It's a bit silly. Them's the rules. From what I can gather from those that have been on the A and the Pro, um, they're actually very good courses. Uh, Abhinav says, just read an article on Twitter by the Daily Mail admitting that the Premier League footballer is arrested for assault. The description, in my opinion, already matches. I'm not reading the name out. Um, yeah, it is what it is put myself on a payroll as a player. Um, well, here's the problem, right? So there is a massive stink, which Ash is coming in in the next half an hour, and hopefully we'll get the first episode of Man and Ash's podcast out there. One of the things that we are going to be talking about on there, I hope, is how um, there's a new uh, rule coming into the National League where clubs are essentially going to be able to sack injured players if they don't play for three months. So 12 month notice, sorry, 12 weeks notice, you can sack a player. Now, a lot of players that are playing in the National League are playing for their jobs. So a one, they'll mostly only be getting one-year contract. Mega players might get a two-year contract. So it's a very shaky existence to be in. And because it's technically not professional, because non-league is technically semi-professional, which is a mad, what a mad word that is. Um... Semi is either professional or not professional. Semi professional doesn't whatever. There's a lot of full time teams playing. I mean, I would be surprised if there's any full time, any non full time teams in the conference. I mean, Macclesfield just went full time. They're in the Northwest Counties. So, um, the fact that there's so called semi professionals playing, and this is the ruling that's just come in, the PFA will not cover National League and below, but. 80% of the players playing in National League have been PFA members at one point, meaning that they were a professional player in the, the 92 and therefore were eligible for becoming part of the PFA Players Union. They're silent on this because it's technically outside of their jurisdiction. I think the PFA needs to extend into the National League. The National League is the fifth professional division. There's no two ways around it. Look at Wrexham at the moment. You tell me Wrexham aren't a professional club. They are 1,000% a professional club. Absolutely. They just signed Ben fucking Foster. Right? You think he's paying five pound a week subs? They're a professional club, and so are a ton of teams in the conference, uh, north, south, and you'll even find them in the likes of Northern Prem, Ishmi, and Southern Prem, that sort of stuff. Right? So me and Ash are probably going to talk about that in depth. Um, but yeah, th the fact that I couldn't just if if Paddock end up being there, I can't put myself down as a player or any of the lads down as a player. They still won't be considered professionals, even if. All they do is play football for Stretford Paddock. They're not professional footballers in the eyes of the Professional Footballers Association. Get a fucking grip. Anyway, cheers for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on who you think the mystery owners are going to be. Um, if you think the Glazers will sell, if you don't think they will sell, all that good stuff. Any questions about coaching and all that sort of shit, I'm going to be in the comments for the next half an hour or so. Let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice.